خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو اسپیشل ایڈیشن آف دس ویک ود حضور وی آر آنڈ ٹو پرزینٹ ہائی لائٹس فرام دا نیشنل پیس سمپوزیم 2023 which also saw the inauguration of the new administrative block for the Beth of Thu Mosque complex. In addition to delivering the keynote speech, Hazrat Khalif al-Masih Ayyidullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz held meetings with various dignitaries. On Sunday, the 5th of March, beloved Hazur also held meetings with several international delegations who had traveled to attend the peace symposium. Here are our highlights from last weekend. The site of London's largest mosque, the spiritual and cultural center of the Ahmadiyya community in Europe, engulfed by flames. As I told you, there are a lot of things that are on the ground. There is a fear of it. But the fear of it doesn't take care of it on the ground. As you can see behind me, those big black billowing smoke coming out of the Beit al-Futur Mosque. Now, this is one of the biggest mosques in Western Europe, apparently. It's part of the Ahmadiyya sect of Islam. And if this is the Lord, then Allah will be able to do it with us. And we will be able to do it with our names from the first time. Fire which began just before midday and spread rapidly, destroying administration buildings. بعض مسلمانوں کا یہ رویہ کہ خوشی منا رہے ہیں اور سبحان اللہ پڑھ رہے ہیں ٹھیک ہے آج یہ سبحان اللہ استحضاء کے رنگ میں اور اللہ تعالیٰ کی غیرت بھڑکانے کے لیے پڑھ رہے ہیں تو پڑھیں لیکن انشاءاللہ جلد ہی اس سے بہتر اور خوبصورت تعمیر کر کے ہم حقیقی سبحان اللہ پڑھیں گے اور ماشاء اللہ ہی پڑھیں گے خدا واحد کے نام پر ٹکے اب اس میں مسجد بنائیں گے ہم بنائیں گے ہم Almost eight years on from a devastating fire on 4th March 2023 with the grace of Allah Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih V, may Allah be his helper, inaugurated the rebuilt Beit al-Fatul administrative building. مالک الملک ہے تو خدا زمن ادخلو سجدن ادخلو سجدن ادخلو سجدن ادخلو سجدن After unveiling a plaque to mark the inauguration of the stunning new complex and after leading Salat, Hazul granted an audience to various guests and dignitaries. Good evening. Thank you for coming here on our function. I'm the ambassador of AT to the UK. AT? Yes. Uh -huh. How is your country? Could be better. <laughs> yes. Could be better. Uh, Thank you. His Holiness, it's a pleasure to see you again. Yeah, I Paul know you. Scully, Minister for Technology and Minister yes. for London, as well as yes. neighbouring MP. Lovely to see you I, as always. I know you very well. <laughs> um, my name is Leroy Scott, and I'm the Mayor of Whitehill and Borden over in Hampshire. 
Yeah, yeah. Almost. Yes. 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 <laughs> and I know you. I think. Good evening, sir. Virendra Sharma, Member of yes. Parliament yes. for yes. Ealing South. I know you. <laughs> thank yes. you, sir. Thank. Following the group meeting. The 2019 recipient of the Ahmadiyya Peace Prize, Mrs. Barbara Hoffman, had the opportunity to meet Hazur. How's life? Life is a bit hard in the last few months because in Mozambique we have floods and floods and cyclones. Uh -huh. There are thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands of people that lost their homes. They were mm. displaced mm. due to the floods. Is government providing them any makeshift arrangement? We're trying to help them with food as much as we can. Uh -huh. With food and we had people housed at our centers. Mm -hmm. The main problem is food or shelter? Uh, well, uh, basic is food. Mm -hmm. Shelter is number two. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an honor for thank you, us thank you very much. to meet you and mm -hmm. to be able to exchange. Uh, thank you for accepting. Our offer. The 2022 recipient of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Peace Prize, Mr. Tadadoshi Akiba, also had the opportunity to meet Hazul. I'm here to uh, represent uh, Hiroshima and also Hibachi, that's a Japanese word for the survivors mm -hmm. of the ethnic bombings. And since I was uh, the mayor for 12 years and uh, I worked with them to mm -hmm. bring peace and to abolish nuclear weapons, and I believe. Exactly what you have been mm. doing, and it's an honor. Mm. I have been to Mir Hiroshima, yes. Ah, yes, I yes. saw your picture. <laughs> yes, and uh, even I wrote on the book uh -huh. my comments and praised uh, the people of Hiroshima, how they rebuilt their yeah. city. Yes, thank you very it's much. It's amazing. And, yeah. so, and uh, with your endorsement of Hiroshima and uh, with you know, just the, us working together, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that uh, mm -hmm. the war in Ukraine will end soon, mm -hmm. and also that uh, nuclear weapons will not be used. Yes, used if only people get sense. Yes. <laughs> so it all depends on our leaders. That's hmm? right. So if you can convince them to t <laughs> take sense. On this occasion, I'd like to my heartfelt uh, gratitude to the Ahmadiyya community uh, for denouncing the atomic bombing of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 10, 1945. Yes. You were perhaps the, yes. the first uh, major organization and major among the major leaders to do so publicly. And I believe that means a great deal to people. Yes. We are, we are still not trying to get lesson from it. That's right. And uh, again, trying to eradicate the life from the face of the earth. Thereafter, Ziad Abul Taif, a member of parliament from Canada who had travelled to attend the peace symposium, had the chance to meet Hazur. Alhamdulillah, everything good. Hmm. And, uh, thank you for. It the seems attention. as if you are very close to him this year, using all our terminology, all our prayers. <laughs> 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 well, um, yeah, indeed, it's just um, the message of, uh, of Ahmadiyya, uh, of peace, uh, and spreading that message to the world is also mine. But people, they are not trying to pay heed to it. They will. They will, in, during our generation or next generation. We need to be persistent. It all depends on you, the politicians. Happy to, <laughs> happy to serve with your blessing. <laughs> <laughs> we have been trying our best, but uh, now the ball is in your court. Uh, yes, um, we need we need everyone. I think the politics in the West is uh, also uh, we call it up uh, bottom up, uh, from base all the way to the head. Um, people have uh, the influence, the ability to to uh, influence the political community to do so. Azrul was informed during the meeting that Mr. Abul Taif is a member of the Canadian Human Rights Committee. I, Discharge uh, human rights is not an easy job. Yeah, it's, it's very distinguished. I was on foreign affairs uh, twice. Also, <coughs> I was a shadow minister for international development. So I did uh, my, my tour from Africa to all the way to Bangladesh, uh, trying to 
you know, to spread the message. And, Unfortunately, and there was a mess up there in Bangladesh yesterday. Yeah, I heard. I can't believe that uh, 88 million people uh, country mm -hmm. have a fear of 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't make sense. It was the height of brutality. They killed one of our um, the member and injured quite a number of them. Yeah. Some of them were very seriously injured. They are hospitalized. When everything is done, now they have deployed a huge number of military and police and all these forces. What is the use of that now? It's, it's I mean, again, uh, it's, it's simple. They burned quite a number of our houses. Simple for, for uh, to, to have the fear of, of 50,000 people. Uh, there's something fundamental there in, in the mentality and the way they are approaching uh, human rights and people's... No, their uh, police uh, did take work. action, but it was a delayed action. Had they been taken it two hours earlier, it would not have happened. Just after 7 p.m., the formal reception marking the inauguration of the mosque and the National Peace Symposium commenced in the hall, attended by hundreds of guests from dozens of countries. Following Talavat and speeches by dignitaries, Hazur presented the Ahmadiyya Muslim Peace Prize for the advancement of peace. The 2019 recipient was Barbara Hoffman, founder of ASIM, a charity that helps children orphaned by wars. The 2022 recipient was Dr. Tadadoshi Akiba from Japan for his efforts to advance practical proposals for nuclear disarmament. You were one of the first in the world to recognize and protest nuclear weapons in humanity and evilness back on August 10th, 1945. The second caliph declared on that day that it is our religious and moral duty to proclaim to the whole world that we do not consider lawful such bloodshed. Belatedly, the world finally came to the same conclusion when the Treaty on the Prevention of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW, took legal effect on January 22, 2021. Words of your holiness give us direction. Regardless of its effect, we shall never give up our efforts to promote peace and justice, certainly. During the keynote address, Hazul highlighted the true purpose of mosques. It is essential to note that Muslims are commanded to build their mosque in the direction of the Holy Kaaba, the sacred house of Mecca, and to worship towards it. Yet, it is not enough to merely turn one's physical direction towards the Holy Kaaba. Rather, Muslims and their mosques must fulfill the objectives of the Kaaba, outlined in chapter three, verse 98 of the Holy Quran, where it states that whosoever enters the sacred house of Allah enters peace. This Quranic verse means that a true Muslim upon entering a mosque shall himself enter a state of peace and by fulfilling the rights and commands of God, prove a beacon of peace and security for others. All our mosques spiritually mirror the Holy Kaaba, where in they serve not only as an abode of worshiping God Almighty, but are also a means of fulfilling the rights of mankind and establishing peace in the world. Just a few days ago marked the first anniversary of the war in Ukraine, and sadly, there is no sign of how or when the war will end. Nonetheless, this has not stopped certain political leaders from stating that once the war does end, Russia should be subjected to extreme sanctions and made to pay for its actions. Recently, a column by the journalist Matthew Paris was published in the Times stating that such statements in advance of any meaningful peace talks are ill-judged and serve only to further inflame a volatile situation and reduce the chances of a peaceful settlement. 
The columnist wrote that political leaders should be above seeking short-term media acclaim and recognize, as he puts it, that the words spoken now can cast long shadows across a future terrain of which we are still ignorant. He writes that now is not the time to speak of reparations from a defeated Russia or to call for a Nuremberg-style war crimes tribunals. I believe his right to serve this warning. What incentive will Russia and its leaders have to seize hostilities uh, if they know that their withdrawal will lead to their certain ruin? As I have said, Islamic teachings require for every effort to be made to bring peaceful solution to a conflict. For this reason, I believe it is essential to keep the channels of communication open and to strive to find mutually acceptable terms of agreement. If, however, the aggressor remains bent on causing misery and destruction and refuses to withdraw, Islam teaches that other nations should join together as one and use proportionate and necessary force to end the cruelties. The objective of the intervening parties must remain at all times to establish peace instead of seeking revenge or humiliating the aggressor. Nor should the underlying intention ever be to line one's pockets or to exploit the conflict to advance Western interests. Otherwise, those who have been demeaned will undoubtedly harbor a sense of injustice and resentment. Such frustrations are bound to eventually boil over and lead to further conflict, and so the cycle of incessant violence will continue to rotate with ever greater fury. Regrettably, as the columnists noted, rather than acting wisely, certain leaders and officials are making statements or pledges that serve only to pour petrol on the fire. Instead of helping to end the war, their comments reduce the long-term chances of peace. The world is well versed in supporting victims and those suffering injustice, as is the case with the Ukrainian nation at this time. Yet, it may surprise you to hear that Islam teaches Muslims to help not only the victim of the persecuted, but also the perpetrator and oppressor. Of course, this does not mean you provide the aggressor with the means of freedom to inflict further cruelties. Rather, to help an aggressor means to stop them from com committing further brutalities and injustice. Uh, whatever wrongs are being committed by the Russian state, we must keep in mind the broader picture that if the war is not brought to an end, it will lead to a deepening global crisis with potentially catastrophic results. Opposing blocs will become further entrenched. Hatreds will become even more deeply rooted, increasing the likelihood of a world war. Hence, as they, they continue to support Ukraine as it defends itself, world powers should also be making every possible effort to end the war through peace talks and good faith negotiations. Otherwise, I fear the war will spread beyond Europe and eastwards towards Asia, and who knows where it will stop. Uh, I think the peace symposium was very impressive, especially what His Holiness said about uh, the war in Ukraine, about uh, the relation to the Quran, uh, the Holy Quran, and uh, what uh, governments should do and should not do. Um, so helping uh, the, uh, the country that was attacked, Ukraine, yes, uh, 
but not in such a way that it will only fuel the conflict. Uh, and that uh, now is not the time to talk about reparations uh, and other aspects, uh, sanctions after the war. Now is not the time. I think those were wise words. Words from um, His Holiness, which are very uh, spot on, emphasising the need for governments, for societies, for people to have the focus on peace. And um, it was interesting. He, and, and refreshing that he, he is not a politician, he's a religious leader. He didn't hold back in his comments, he was very clear and quite blunt about you know, the need uh, for countries to have peace and for example uh, in the future not have uh, the Ukraine and Russia one side trying to get back on the other, on the other and, and for countries to have proportionate force in the support that they provide for the Ukraine. It was a really important message. What I found quite impressive was that he was he was able to he was able to talk about stuff that was that somewhat unorthodox and out, outside of the Everton window, um, but still very much true and important. So when it comes to NATO's encroachment on Europe and how he, he gave a context and a backstory behind behind the Russian war, that a lot of people aren't able, a lot of uh, a lot of politicians, a lot of people elected like myself, a lot of journalists would be somewhat fearful of talking about. And he was able, he being a holy figure, doesn't have those same concerns or limitations or fears that others would. And he brought it up in a, he brought it up in the right context as well, without trying to excuse Russia's aggression. Um, yeah, it was a really quite co cool uh, speech, giving a really uh, an over an encompassing perspective of the whole situation. That's important. His Holiness spoke very movingly about. Um, particularly the war in, in Russia and Ukraine. Um, I, I think I was struck by um, the admirable mercy that he showed for, for the Russians as well as the Ukrainians. I think it can be very easy to demonize one group and to create um, an artificial polarization when it comes to war, but he spoke uh, with kindness and, and, and about uh, moderating our, our um, defense of ourselves to, to, to purely defensive actions. His Holiness just gave an amazing uh, speech which is very much into the Muslim faith but also for non-Muslim people it's very relevant, very important because he says basically that true people, true believers and true people from God need to unite without uh, any um, compromise on their religious beliefs still getting together to work for harmony and peace and this is uh, this i think is a message from a man from god the end speech was, was from his holiness was just amazing and i think chimes in very well with my own thoughts um, about the fact that you shouldn't meet aggression with aggression because you're making yourself the aggressor again so um and i think that message which ran through his speech was um was just spot on we share a common humanity that actually we don't meet aggression with aggression but um, that's that to me was the powerful message coming out of that and it's one that I shall repeat I shall tell people about what I've heard this evening um, with great joy I remember his holiness was quite pessimistic four years ago I think what much of what he feared then has now come to pass and it is quite a sobering message and uh, really the need you can't resolve things by war i found his comments on the how can i put this the talking of russia and the ukraine situation and um, how threatening dire consequences before peace has even begun is it, certainly there's a certain logic to that so sort of if you've got nothing to lose then why would you ever stop yeah so you know, that was a very interesting perspective. It's not one I'd heard before. That His Holiness always talks about peace and makes it a key issue of his message to the community and the world, I think is so important. We need more people uh, with the status of His Holiness to get that message. And we politicians should listen to him. The theme that he was talking about was the foundation of, of true peace. And I think he was linking it to how we behave and how we think and how we treat other people. Um, he was also talking about actual events in the world today and it's essentially challenging us to do more. 
Uh, I was very fortunate I was sitting next to His Holiness uh, this evening and I had a long, long chat with him about many, many things. Um, but he said after his speech uh, to me, now the ball's in your court. So I think what he meant was uh, politicians have got to work ever harder in whatever capacity that we have to make the argument for peace. And for me, uh, the speech of your um, uh, Khalifa was uh, uh, something uh, special because I, am, uh, I, I was born in Ukraine and that is very close to me what he was saying about you know humanity, about that humanity first, that we need to do something to stop, to stop all these brutalities and that for me that is uh, another <clears throat> proof that you are not only concentrated about your own problems, your own, your own issues, one country or whatever, but you are just thinking about the whole world and that is really great that love for everyone hated none. The following day, on Sunday 5th March, Hazrat Khalif al masih granted audience to 10 international delegations comprising academics, media, human rights activists, amongst others, who had travelled to attend the peace symposium. Those fortunate to meet Hazur included a delegation from the International Religions for Peace organisation, as well as delegations from Belgium, Italy, Portugal, Spain, France, Norway, Holland, Greece and Switzerland. And I've been very, very touched by his uh, speech uh, yesterday, uh, namely when he, when he told us about the importance of uh, feeling compassion, not just toward victims, but also towards perpetrators. I think this is a, a very strong and ch challenging message that can be very helpful to build a culture of peace uh, all over the world. It's not, uh, it's not so usual to see the, to, to listen, to hear this kind of message. And I think uh, uh, we felt that uh, His Holiness speaks from his heart. He speaks about something that he lives deep, deep inside himself. And uh, that gives authority to, to someone to speak like that. Oh, very, very nice. Uh, Khalifa is a good, good person and uh, so, um, uh, friendly and um, all at the same time so uh, a very spiritual man and uh, very uh, have a, a good knowledge of the problems of the world. The discussion for last night and his speech was so important and I, I hope that the press will speak about that about his feeling about the war and we see that even if he is a religious leader, but he knows about the world and the real fact in the world. And he gave not only a religious uh, solution, he, take, he put the religion to help how to give a big decision. And I think that all the leaders like Putin, Zelensky, Macron, they have to, even if we speak of, for example, in France, separation between religion and uh, uh, the state, but to hear them the as a philosopher, as leader, is so important. And we have to hear them because it was not against the war or something, no. He knows the reality, but he said to people, but be careful. And that is so important to say to the leader, don't, br don't go over a certain border. The consequences will be very dangerous for that, and it's so important. Those were highlights from just some of beloved Hazul's activities last weekend. We now end with our final segment, the Friday Sermon Summary. In today's Friday Sermon, Hazur, may Allah be his helper, continued his sermons on the excellences of the Holy Quran. Towards the end, Hazur, may Allah be his helper, spoke regarding Zahid Hassan Sahib Shaheed who was martyred after an attack by extremists in Bangladesh. Hazur, may Allah be his helper, further reiterated the need for all Ahmadis to focus on prayers. Bangladesh, me jaisa ke, hume pata hai, gudashta jume ko, jalsa ho raha tha, aur jalsa ke daran, bulwaiyon ne aur dashit kardo ne hamla kiya. Police ne pehle ye, aur intizamiya ne yehi, tusalli dilai thi ke, वो कंट्रोल कर लेंगे और कुछ नहीं होगा इसलिए तुम जलसा करो जलसा जारी रहा लेकिन जब लोग आ गए तो पुलिस वहां तमाशाई बनी खड़ी रही यहां तक कि चंद घंटे गुजरने के बाद फिर ऊपर से जब उनको को मिला तब 
उन्होंने एक्शन लिया लेकिन उस वक्त तक बहुत कुछ हो चुका था बहरहाल उस फसाद में हमारे एक भाई बच्चा जायद हसन साहब भी शहीद हुए जो अबू बकर सदीक साहब बांग्लादेश के बेटे थे इन्ना लाए व इन्ना लाए राजे उन दुश्मन समझता है कि वो जमात के अफराद को इस तरह आजमा कर और सख्तियाँ वारद करके उनके हौसले पस्त कर देंगे मगर ये इसके बिल्कुल उल्ट है वहाँ से भी बाज़ ख़त मुझे आए हैं बाद नौजवानों ने भी लिखा है कि अगर मज़ीद चाहतों की ज़रूरत है तो ये दुआ करें कि हम भी उनमें शामिल हो जाएं। बस ऐसे लोगों का ये कमीना दुश्मन क्या बिगाड़ सकता है बहरहाल हमें दुआ करनी चाहिए अल्लाह ताला इनके शर से हमें बचाए और हम पर रहम और फजल फरमाए आजकल दुआओं पर बहुत ज़्यादा जोर दें